seniors, how awesome is this? We made it. Good morning. I'm John Haldeman. I'm the principal of Donegal High School. And on behalf of the faculty, administration, and staff of Donegal School District, I would like to welcome you to the 67th annual commencement exercise for the Donegal High School. At this time, I would ask that you stand and honor America as Donegal senior chorus member Ricky Fitz sings our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, who say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh who say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Seniors, you may be seated. We will begin this morning's program with a series of student presentations. It is now my pleasure to present to you the president of the class of 2021, Myra Nakvi. Myra will be attending Dickinson College to study law and policy. Ladies and gentlemen, Myra Nakvi. Good morning, and welcome to the Donegal High School Class of 2021 Commencement Ceremony. On behalf of the class, I'd like to thank everyone who played a role in the lives of today's graduating seniors. Family and friends, faculty and staff, and everyone in between, we owe you all a debt of gratitude. While the setting this morning is familiar, this gathering is just a little bit different, a reminder of the extraordinary challenges we have faced as a class. It would be a lie to say that up until this point, we have gone through high school together, since for some of us, this week was the first time we have even seen each other since March of 2020. Though our world is slowly returning back to the way we left it on that Friday the 13th, the space between each of our chairs today reminds us of all that we have faced in the last half of our high school career and represents how we can all assemble together yet apart. Throughout the past year and a half, not only our school, but also our entire world has been navigating through the new life to which we have had to adjust. How can we continue to maintain relationships, grow, and develop from such a distance? Though our community has faced great adversity during this time, we have been able to learn so much about ourselves, our friends and family, and the world around us. Sure, 
We can spend our time dwelling on all that we've lost and missed out on in our high school careers, or we can use that bit of distance between each other to make our hearts grow stronger, our minds sharper, and our futures brighter. During a time of great social and political divide in our nation, the Donegal community has consistently remained together, apart. At the beginning of the pandemic, I struggled to relate to and understand the masses of people who missed attending big gatherings, eating in restaurants, and attending sporting events, since I'm more of an introverted individual. However, I cannot deny the fact that it is human nature to yearn for socialization and togetherness. What would we have taken from our 12 years at Donegal if we had not had friends and family by our side? To be honest, I don't remember much from my 10th grade biology class, but I will never forget the group of students who convinced our teacher three days in a row that the bell was not going to ring that day and therefore we could leave class early to go to lunch. After four years of attending high school sporting events, I still can't follow a football, a, a football game, but I could probably recite the cheers about Taco Bell's cinnamon twists. Because really, it's not about winning or losing, getting the best grade or winning that Apollo award. It's about the time we've spent here as a class, pushing each other to do our best and uniting over our differences for the sake of growth and progression. Our class has endured a lot, and I'm not even talking about the pandemic. Remember when we had to take class-wide bathroom breaks in elementary school? Or when we ran the mile out in front of the junior high after the old track had been closed and Mrs. Smith's computer class could watch us from the window? What about last year when we ran around on poles playing Quidditch in Miss Cobalt's gym class? We could spend hours recounting all of the funny and maybe even slightly embarrassing, but nevertheless heartwarming memories we share as a class. And as we spend our final hour here together, I hope we can connect over both our shared experiences and the differences that make each and every one of us so unique. It'd be a shame if Rachel, Amanda, and I did not reference running in our speeches today. And although I know that most of you avoid running then volunteer yourself to do it, the sport can teach us all a very beautiful thing. This baton represents unity, as running in a relay is a group effort. Every member of the team is equally responsible for moving the baton around the track as fast as they can. And it doesn't matter if one member runs 10 seconds faster than the other. During this race, we are not focused on individual performance. Rather, we are running for the other members of our team. The best relay teams are ones whose members are united over their love for each other and the sport, who share a common goal in striving to run their best and maybe even take the gold. Unity is vital to every team, club, and organization working together to break records or achieve change. So as we begin to, to step out into the workforce, college, or the military, remember that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. After the conclusion of the ceremony, it is likely that some of us may never return to DHS. And although this transition from high school to adulthood may conjure feelings of uncertainty or fear, I challenge you all to embrace this change and use whatever emotions you may be feeling to guide you in your future endeavors. Over the past year and a half, we have proven to ourselves that we can remain united over the distances, together, apart. We may not realize it now, but we will always carry a piece of Donegal with us, whether it's the lessons we've learned while having conversation with peers and teachers, the laughs you shared in the cafeteria, or even that clay pot that you've just kept since taking ceramics. You will forever have a place in the Donegal community. It has been a pleasure to address everyone today. I have great pride in my fellow peers, and I am so excited to see what the future holds for each of us, forever together, apart. Lead a life of compassion and honesty, advocate for your neighbors, and unite over your differences. Thank you for representing the class, the Donegal community, and congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you, Myra. At this time, our senior chorus will present their senior song. I will sing you the stars by Mark Burroughs. The chorus is directed by Mrs. Megan Catterbone.
I would now like to present to you this morning's student speakers. Our first student speaker is the valedictorian of the class of 2021, Miss Amanda Fry. I am pleased to announce that Amanda will be attending Shippensburg University to study elementary education. Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Fry. As the baton passes to me on its journey, I am reminded of the journey we've all taken to get here, the hero's journey. This idea, one you may have learned about in your English or social studies classes, is a structure many stories take with nine crucial steps as the main character leaves their known world and enters into the unknown, faces challenges along the way, and ultimately claims victory, ending the story a better person than they entered it. Today, I want to recount our hero's journey. We begin to the call, with the call to adventure, which I believe we received in first grade. Unlike kindergarten, we could not go home at noon as our day was only halfway over. Things became real in first grade. No more songs about purple Kool-Aid or using sign language to ask to go to the bathroom. We were in for the long haul. Our educational endeavor had officially begun. The next step in our journey was the reception of supernatural aid. Staying at school for a full day quickly presented a problem to which our hair netted guardian angels presented a solution. We trekked down the halls, tired from our mornings filled with sight words and counting games to arrive at the cafeteria. For the first time, we ate lunch at school. Ladies from behind towering silvery countertops graciously provided us with sustenance for our journey in the form of pizza dippers, grilled cheese, and egg McDonagall. With full stomachs and a restored sense of hope, we'd eagerly return to our classrooms, inspired to embrace the rest of the day with open arms. Slowly but surely, we grew comfortable with the idea of school, progressing from first grade to second and from second to third. Little to our knowledge, the school world as we knew it was about to change. Before we officially crossed over the threshold, we were assigned one final task to complete in order to prove we were ready for the real adventure. These threshold guardians, to whom we lovingly referred to as our teachers, challenged us with this final task, the Great Measurement Olympics of 2012. During these games, the best and brightest of each class went head to head, dueling with only their bare hands and the multiplication facts they had memorized until we finally claimed a victor. Unfortunately, our champion got a paper cut and had to go to the nurse's office. Nevertheless, we celebrated the victory, unaware of the new unknown realm we were about to enter. Our crossing of the threshold was marked by the start of fourth grade. 
From mighty third graders, we became lowly fourth graders, leaving our homes of Donegal Springs, Maytown, and Riverview, adventuring to the intermediate school. For the first time in history, our class was joined together under one roof, ready to take on DIS and the challenges that came with it. The first challenge awaiting us was confinement. Sensing our powers growing stronger, they attempted to crush our spirit by moving our classrooms outside to trailers. They said it was because of renovations. However, I think the real reason was because we were too powerful to contain inside one building. Though we were challenged by this task, we were not without help. Our helper was presented in the form of swipe badges. Always in awe of the teacher's badges, we were finally given the chance to wield our own in order to enter the school and use the bathroom. This taste of power and independence gave us the confidence we needed to survive fourth grade and emerge victorious, proving that even after being exiled from the building, we were still unstoppable. Released from the clutches of fourth grade, what we now faced in fifth grade was truly a challenge of great proportion the game Shipwreck. In the cold confinement of the gymnasium, we were tasked with an obstacle course, from crawling through tubes to swinging on a rope. While the gym teachers considered it a fun activity, touching the floor and falling into the ocean meant game over. During Shipwreck, we were tempted to give in, surrendering ourselves to the waves and consequently taking a seat on the sidelines. But we overcame this temptation, encouraged by our fellow shipmates to keep persevering and not touch the ground until we made it safely ashore, or at least until the whistle blew for the end of class. One final task remained before we could claim victory over the intermediate school, Math Mall. Using our vast knowledge of supply and demand, cost analysis, and financial gain, we had to create a successful revenue-generating business in the course of six short weeks. Mentored by our parents, we improved our understanding of the concept of money, and most of us were wisely advised not to spend all of our real money in exchange for making the most math mall dollars. Math mall came and went, giving us a newfound appreciation for capitalism. We at last reached the end of sixth grade and our time at DIS. Finally, we had arrived at the abyss. Like Harry coming face to face with Voldemort, or Luke realizing that Darth Vader was indeed his father, we entered into the darkest part of our journey, middle school. We had been warned from countless movies and TV shows of the dangers which junior high possessed. Between the summer of sixth and seventh grade, we prepared to get shoved into lockers and our heads flushed in toilets and most of all, the dreaded health class. These two years were filled with tough but crucial growing pains that came with being a teenager. We faced hardship on multiple occasions, including the PACER tests and the feared text-dependent analysis essays. Amidst these dark and dingy halls, we realized who our friends were, what classes we liked, and who we wanted to be. Finally able to express our revelations as we chose our own classes for the first time in preparation for high school. These two years, though they may have felt much longer, came to an end as we parted from the middle school once and for all. After narrowly escaping the jaws of junior high, we reached the stage of transformation. We departed from the realm of middle school and started a new journey right here at this building. From our first steps into the school for freshman orientation, we knew that high school would be like nothing we'd experienced so far. Our journey became less collective as we each branched out and discovered where our interests truly lie. For the first time, classes were leveled and we could choose where to challenge ourselves. Some of us took languages, others woodworking and computer science, and yet others knew music or art classes. Some of us played sports, joined debate club, or were inducted into an honor society. As freshmen, we could now watch football games from the student section and participate in homecoming and its festivities. I hope you can each look back and fondly recall the new experiences you had during high school and how they shaped you into the person that you are today. Of course, like any story must, I want to recognize the challenges that came along with this transition to high school. This element in the hero's journey, referred to as atonement, pushes us to be content where we are. High school was filled with projects, keystones, finals, and SATs, holding us all accountable for our learning. Our biggest test ultimately came last year as we adapted to learning from a distance. But overcoming all of these challenges is the reason you are seated here today, and that is a reason to celebrate. We've arrived at the end of this 12-year story. We have conquered every grade and defeated every test to finally be rewarded with diplomas. 
The unknowns that filled elementary, intermediate, junior high, and high school have become known to us as our journey comes to its conclusion. However, a hero's journey is cyclical. We end one cycle only to begin the next. As you embark on your own new adventure, I ask that you hold with you these two important truths. First, you are a hero. I just walked you through our journey. Maybe yours looks different. Maybe you spent more time in the abyss than you would have liked. Maybe you didn't get the helper you desperately needed. And maybe your transformation wasn't as transformative as you would have liked. But you made it. You have slayed the dragon and are being rightfully recognized for doing so. I tried to get Mr. Haldeman to let us wear capes instead of gowns, but for some reason he didn't like that idea. So please use your imagination and pretend like you are wearing a superhero's cape. You are a hero. And second, you've completed one journey only to begin another, except this time there's no exact path for you to follow, progressing from one grade level to the next. You are in full control of the journey now. Remember that there will be highs and lows, good times and bad, and both are necessary for growth. By embracing each step of the journey, you will be able to fully experience and appreciate life and become the person that you want to be. Our class has completed the final lap in the race. We now go our separate ways to begin our new journeys. Let us boldly and confidently continue our quest as the heroes of the class of 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda, and congratulations. Our second speaker this morning is the salutatorian of the class of 2021, Ms. Rachel Fernald. I am pleased to announce that Rachel will be attending Millersville University to study biology education. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Fernald. Congratulations, class of 2021. It is an honor to be speaking before you this morning, all together as one graduating class. I would like to extend my personal congratulations to all of you as we celebrate our graduation together. The baton I am holding is a symbol of the unity our class president described, and it also speaks to the importance of putting forth your best effort. As we reminisce about our years in school and look toward the future, these words of encouragement come to mind. In whatever you do, give it your all. No one can ask for any more or any less than that. Each of us has been given a unique set of abilities, both strengths and weaknesses. Whichever abilities you have, use them to the fullest. We are a class of artists, athletes, and writers. We are a class of photographers, engineers, musicians, and scholars. We are a class of both leaders and followers. We have practical thinkers, creative thinkers, and analysts. We have classmates who are social, and classmates who prefer time alone, and those in between. We are a class of future doctors, emergency response workers, electricians, farmers, mechanics, business managers, chemists, teachers, lawyers, government workers, nurses, the list goes on. God has given each of us a special combination of abilities. He is the one who truly deserves the credit for what makes each of us unique. It is important to understand that the things in life you excel in may be the very things others struggle in and vice versa. With this idea in mind, our expectations of each other should be based primarily on effort, knowing that everyone has different accomplishments. We can expect others to do their best, but not expect so much of them that we place unnecessary pressure on them. I think of how teachers have reasonable expectations of their students because teachers know what their students are capable of doing. In the same way, we can expect others to do their best, whatever that may be given the circumstances, instead of having a set expectation in mind. The same applies to our expectations of ourselves. We should strive to do our best rather than placing unreasonably high or low expectations on ourselves. This does not mean we should not set goals for ourselves. 
In fact, goal setting is important, but we can learn to set reasonable goals based on what we know to be our personal abilities. We like to talk about our strengths, but what about our weaknesses? I think people generally tend to be ashamed of their weaknesses, but we can take a different perspective. We must approach our weaknesses as opportunities for growth. It is easy for us to work hard at the things we excel in, maybe because we assume the results will be favorable. What is more difficult is putting forth effort in our weaknesses. Resist the urge to give up when you experience frustration in the abilities you feel you lack. These are the moments when your level of effort matters most. As a personal example, some of you know that although I enjoy musical theater, acting is not one of my strengths. Throughout high school, I experienced frustration as my effort did not seem to be getting me anywhere. Although I still struggle on stage, I have grown in my abilities because I was willing to try. Our weaknesses are not reasons to give up. They are challenges to overcome. Challenges require perseverance, which is the key to doing your best when faced with a tough situation. Notice I did not say perseverance is the key to success. Perseverance is the key to putting forth your best effort. The way I see it, doing your best is a form of success, no matter what your best may be at that moment. Perseverance requires patience. Most of us, if not all, have faced challenges with schoolwork, relationships, activities, and work in high school. This past school year has been a challenge all its own. But we are able to work to the best of our ability despite the challenges we run into. You may not become an Olympic athlete or a Broadway performer just through perseverance, but it is worthwhile to still do your best. Your best is all your own. Your accomplishments do not become less or more valuable when they are compared to those of others around you. It is better to finish a race knowing you've run your very hardest than to finish a race with a medal knowing you could have run faster. Yes, I had to throw in a running analogy somewhere. Success is commonly defined in comparison to the accomplishments of others, but maybe success is subjective. Measures of success may be dependent upon the situation at hand. We work within the circumstances we are placed. Sometimes a person may not be able to do what they want to excel in. Someone with poor eyesight may not be able to become a surgeon, for example. Other times, an unexpected situation can prevent a person from performing well, such as how injuries often prevent athletes from competing as well as they would like. Discouraging circumstances are not the same as excuses, though. Circumstances may explain why we didn't achieve what we wanted to. Excuses explain why we didn't try as hard as we should have. You may not have control over your circumstances, but you can choose whether or not you will try. The effort you contribute to a task is also determined by your priorities. No one can be expected to put maximum effort into every single thing in life. There is not time for that. You have limited time and energy to spend, and you are able to choose what you do with what you have been given. What will you prioritize? What matters most to you in life? It is okay to put more time and effort into some things and less into others. Maybe you are busy with work, but you also care about your relationship with a friend or family member. Sometimes, putting your work on hold to spend time with that person is a priority. Doing your best is applicable in all areas of life, including relationships. Time spent caring for others and building relationships is time well spent. There is time for work, but there is also time for investing into the lives of others. Whether we like it or not, the decisions we make on a daily basis reflect our true priorities. Every time we walk into class, enter the practice room, spend time with a friend, step onto the turf, stand in front of an audience, enter the workplace, we must be ready to give our best in the moment. And as we put forth our best effort every time, we can expect to see growth. The future holds both enjoyment and difficulty, but whatever circumstances we may face, it is our responsibility to face them with perseverance and a willing attitude. And now, I pass the baton off to each of you. How will you spend your time? What are your priorities? How will you use the abilities you have been given? I encourage and challenge you to give you your best in everything you do. Congratulations to this year's graduating class. Thank you, Rachel, and congratulations. Next, it is my pleasure to announce several academic awards. Our first award this morning is the Mount Joy Lions Club Valedictorian Award. This award is presented to the highest ranking student in the class in scholarship. The recipient of this award 
is Amanda Fry. Come on up, Amanda. Our next award is the Marietta Charitable Trust Salutatorian Award. This award is presented to the student second highest in scholarship scholastic rank. The recipient of this award is Rachel Fernald. Our next award recognizes a student enrolled in a program at the Lancaster County Career and Technology Centers. The Mount Joy Lions Club Career and Technology Valedictorian Award is presented to the graduating Donegal Senior who ranks first scholastically at the Career and Technology Centers and has exhibited qualities of leadership and service. The recipient of this year's award is Cheyenne Bender. The last award that I have the honor of announcing this morning is the Madeline G. McDaniel Memorial Award. This award is given in honor and memory of Madeline McDaniel, who was the grandmother of Morgan and Abigail Lay. Morgan and Abigail graduated third and fourth, respectfully, in the Donegal High School class of 1994. The award is to be presented to the senior who has the third highest grade point average in the graduating class. The recipient of this year's award is Myra Nakvi. Dr. Lausch, Mr. Overlander, school board members, faculty members, parents, relatives, and honored guests, at this time, it is my pleasure to present to you the class of 2021. Before I formally address the class of 2021, I would recognize, I would like to recognize several groups of people. First, our DHS faculty and the faculty of the Donegal School District for all you have done this year to teach, motivate, guide, and mentor this year's graduating class. Next, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my secretary, Ms. Tina Mag, for her tireless efforts to help organize today's event. Sure, give her a round of applause. Third, our high school administrative team, assistant principals Mrs. Heather Herhalger, Mrs. Nicole Roberts, and our director of athletics and curricular activities, Mr. Frank Hawkins. I am blessed to work with such a fine group of individuals. Believe it or not, this is our first year together as a team, and I want to express my sincere gratitude to them for their support this school year. Next, I'd like to our entire, I'd like to thank our entire school district maintenance and custodial crew who helped prepare, prepare for our wonderful facilities for this morning's event. Also, a shout out to Mrs. Daggett, our senior class advisor. I couldn't have done it without you this year. And finally, to John Coleman and his tech crew for their behind the scenes work to make sure that those who couldn't join us in person can watch from afar. If we could please give those groups a round of applause.
I do have one more group to recognize. Bear with me. Parents and guardians of graduating seniors, I'd like our seniors to recognize you. I'd personally like to thank you for your support you have shown the Donegal School District during this past year. Seniors, can you please rise and join me in a round of applause for your parents and guardians. You may be seated, seniors, go ahead. All right, now's my time to address you. Seniors, do you know the difference between an autobiography and a biography? No, this isn't one of my crazy dad jokes. It's a question. I'm sure you all know that a biography is something written about a person's life by someone else, while an autobiography is something written about a person's life by themselves. Every one of you at some point in your life will have a biography written about you. It's called an obituary. Now, you may find this odd, but each day I start by reading the obituaries in the morning paper. It's fascinating to read each person's life story summarized and distilled into just a few paragraphs organized into a few columns in the paper. Realizing that these are typically not written by the deceased, but by a loved one or close acquaintance, which makes them a biography. It's striking how a person's lifetime can be succinctly described in an obituary. The common themes in these writings tell when a person was born, who their closest relatives are, where they went to high school, what they excelled in, where they worked, and what their hobbies were. But the most interesting part about these obituaries is that they note all the positive aspects a person brought to those around them and for the type of person they should be remembered as. These morning biographies often get, to me, get me thinking about what my morning biography might look like. You know, we should all think about this. What type of impression am I going to leave? What are those closest to me going to say about me when I'm no longer here? Seniors, I would like to focus my comments this morning on a few words of advice about life and things you can do so that when someone writes your morning biography, they'll have plenty of positives to share. I have nine things. First, wake up every day with a to-do list. And by the way, I did invite everybody here, all the seniors, to go running with me this morning and not one showed up at six o'clock, not one. That's okay. This list you make can be big or small. This list can include things to do for yourself or for others, but develop a habit of creating a list of things you intend on accomplishing every day. This list will guide your activities and help you work towards the completion of items that were important enough to consider when you reflect on what you want your outcome to be. Each day is an opportunity to make progress on the goal you have set for next week or next year but do your best to complete this list on a daily basis. Number two, never stop learning. I'm gonna fill you in on a little secret, seniors. Some of the academics you learned here at the high school, you may never use again. That doesn't include the Pythagorean theorem. You'll use that all the time. Some facts or figures may never, you may, may never have need for, but have built a foundation of learning how to learn you will continue to learn every day. Learning doesn't happen in a vacuum. You're, you were engaged with your teachers when you were here. You were engaged with your peers. One of the most valuable lessons you learned is how to interact with people, how to interact with those who hold different viewpoints than your own. This is a skill that will make you successful in life. Third, this is one of my favorites, find time to laugh. No one's perfect and those imperfections that makes you, each of you, unique. A sense of humor and the ability to tell a good joke from time to time is a great asset. Being able to recognize and appreciate the irony or perhaps absurdity of a situation can make an unbearable circumstance bearable and maybe even comical. After all, 
the best comics find their material in everyday life. Number four, everyone is an expert in something. This expertise may be in a career or in just a hobby. It is now your task to find out what you are an expert in. Some of you will find it more quickly than others, but everyone has something in which they will excel. Go out and find it. Number five, it's okay to fail and make mistakes. Failure is not acceptable only if you didn't truly put forth your best effort, and it's okay to make mistakes only if you don't make that, the same mistake twice. Be willing to try new things. Be willing to take risks. Be willing to fail and make mistakes along the way. But also be willing to use every failure or mistake as a learning experience to make you become a better person. J.K. Rowling perhaps summarized this best. It's impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautious, cautiously that you might as, might as not as well lived at all in which case you have failed by default. Lead by example. You will have the opportunity to do this when you become a parent. There is no other full-time job, yes, parenting is a full-time job, that provides you such an immersive opportunity to lead by example. But remember this, leading by example sometimes means the right things that you, doing the right things that you may not be the most popular choice. If you're fortunate enough to be a leader of some sort, and I know most of you will be, choose to be a servant leader. Servant leaders put the needs of others first. When the opportunity of life presents itself, whether that be in a job, your daily life, be a servant leader. Some people want to become a leader because they aspire to have power, but the most powerful leaders are those who are servant leaders. Eight. Be a humble person. A humble person is teachable, grateful, asks for help, treats everyone with respect, and recognizes limitations. It is these traits of humility that will get you through life. And finally, focus on the future, not the past. You can't change the past, but the past can shape your future. Take what you have learned here at Donegal High School to forge a path of success for your future. The hard thing about life is that it doesn't come with an instruction manual, and how could it? Life is dynamic and ever-changing, but these words of advice that I gave you today are a good place to start. Your future is just unfolding, and the columns aren't yet written. It's up to you to create the story that one day someone will write about you. Class of 2021, I congratulate you on reaching this milestone. Remember, we love you, and you will always be a member of our tribe. Dr. Lausch, I would like to present to you the members of the Donegal High School class of 2021 as candidates for graduation. Thank you, Mr. Haldeman. Um, I'm going to be brief and I won't talk about obituaries today. But my topic is similar to both what Rachel and Mr. Haldeman talked about, and I'd like to remind you that pretty soon here, you're not going to be a Donegal School District student. And I have a question for you before you're no longer a student. How do you think you'll be remembered in Donegal? Now, some of you may be thinking about a variety of things right now. Some might be good, some might not be so good. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that might make you feel a little bit better we really don't remember about your grades, your projects, your activities, whether you were a great student or a not so great student. What do we remember? We remember the kind of person you were. We remember if you were kind to others, if you showed empathy and compassion, if you took responsibility, were a hard worker, and were accepting of everyone. What we remember is your character. And I'm pretty sure that all the adults in the stadium right now, if they thought back to their school days, can tell you who was nice to them and maybe who wasn't so nice to them. 
but they remember nothing really about what they learned. And you're all about to embark on the next phase of your life. And in life, your character and how you treat each other is way more important than any grades you got here at high school. So in this next phase of your life, whether that be workforce or military or post-secondary school or some other option that you choose, ask yourself, how do I want to be remembered at the end of this phase of my life? Because it doesn't matter the pathway you choose. Your character and how you treat others is what will determine your success. So in many ways, today is more than a graduation for you. It's a decision day. It's your bridge into adulthood where you get to decide the type of person you are going to be moving forward from here. It may mean a continuation of who you've been throughout your schooling, or it may mean you want to make some tweaks to ensure your future success. The decision is yours to make on this decision day, and the choices you make will define how you are remembered. I thank you for listening. I don't want to stand in your way of what you're here for, but I do have one more thing that I have to say today. And that is, by the powers vested in me as a commissioned officer of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby declare before all persons assembled that these outstanding members of the Donegal High School Class of 2021 have met or exceeded all requirements established by the Pennsylvania Department of Education and Donegal School District Board of Directors to become recipients of a high school diploma. It is with great pride that I state the class of 2020 is, 2021 is now ready to graduate. As Donegal School Board President, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to today's graduation. Welcome the family and friends of the class of 2021. On behalf of the School Board of Donegal, I would like to thank teachers, faculty, staff, maintenance staff, everyone for getting the class of 2021 through some trying times the last year and a half. The class of 2021 has not had a normal four-year high school experience because of COVID-19. However, our students persevered as Donegal students always do. At Donegal, our administrative team, our teachers, support staff, maintenance team all adapted and went out of their way to try to make each school day of the last year and a half memorable for the kids and meaningful and to try to get them to where we are today. Each day and each week brought new challenges, new orders from the state, sometimes daily change to the students' activities and students' student schedule. As a graduate of Donegal class of 1990 and as a lifelong resident of the Donegal community, I have learned that being a student and then a graduate at Donegal means something. It's a special honor to have. It's special when you walk across this stage and then become part of our community. To get through 2020 and 2021 school years, our administrative team, your teachers, the support staff, and the community have all worked hard to educate students in this class and to get them to where they are today. As the students walk across this stage to become Donegal graduates, they will become part of a tradition and part of our community in general as they continue in their life. As Mr. Haldeman said, Donegal is a family. We are one tribe. Donegal community is, Donegal uh, community welcomes the class of 2021, and we are all very proud of you. On behalf of the school board, we congratulate each graduate, and we are very proud of all your accomplishments. This class is very special to me, not just because my, my son's part of the class, but I grew up with this class as uh, a father, and also a young coach. I got to, to learn to be a coach, to coach a lot of you in youth sports, including Garrett Blake playing football, uh, tackling some Conestoga Valley kids and knocking the wind out of them. Uh, Joel Guerrillo uh, striking out baseball players in summer baseball. Xavier Cannon hitting some home runs down at uh, Donegal Marietta Fields. 
Gavin Hawk scoring some points. The list is endless. I could go on and name a lot of students. But the class is very special to me, and I want you to know that as a Donegal graduate, we are always going to remember you in our community. And while the school board is volunteer positions, we all do this for you. Your teachers do this for you. The administrative team does this for you. And I would like to, to remember that once you're a Donegal Indian, you'll always be a Donegal Indian, no matter where you go in life. And I congratulate you, and may God bless you all. At this time, we will announce the graduate graduates for Donegal High School class of 2021. Announcing the graduates today will be Myra Nockvi, the class of 2021 class president, and Chelsea Halterman, student council president. We would ask that you please hold your applause until all graduates' names are read to ensure that their families and the students have the opportunity to hear each graduate's name read aloud. You ready to do this? All right. Are you first? Yeah. Amanda Jane Fry. Rachel Lynn Fernald. Giovanni Luis Acosta. Fallon Ray Akers. Andrew Nathan Allen. Christian Andres Almanza. Carrie Jo Anderson. Colin David Arntz. Aiden Garrett Atkins. Autumn Marie Baldwin. Kate Ann Burrell. Lewis John Barton. Haley Elizabeth Bauer. Emma Suzanne Beats. Daniel Paul Body. Cheyenne Marie Bender. Victoria Elizabeth Bisking. Garrett Matthew Blake. Olivia Linda Rose Bowers. Peyton Kennedy Boyles.
Danielle Annalise Brady. Liberty Rose Brenneman. Ariel Mary Lillian Brill. Mackenzie Lynn Brody. Haley Tia Brown. Elena Beth Brubaker. Xavier Jerome Cannon. David Paul Carnes. Tabitha Leona Clark. Kyla Elizabeth Collins. Josue Eduardo Canessa. Jaden Scott Cox. Benjamin Matthew Cretella. Brandon Anthony Cugliello. Kinsey Elaine Custer. Joanne Haberstro Dancaz. Thomas Joseph Delich. Elena Joyce Dreggy. Hannah Elizabeth Dunn. Madison Marie Eby. Jacob Michael Eaches. Juno Ainsley Elkner. Sydney Jean Erb. Richard Charles Fitz. Jefferson Flores. Madison Kylie Frederick. Logan James Fry. Hannah Elizabeth Fuller. Odalise Michelle Garcia. Jessica Montana Geary. Andrew James Geiger Funk. Asia Jade Gibbs. Madeline Eva Gone. Zoe Morgan Gonzalez. Joelle Robert Grio. Jasmine Nicole Groff. Hayden D'Angelo Guerrero. Tanner Blaine Gumbert.
Sean Edward Haynes. Benjamin Richard Hallgren. Chelsea Lynn Halterman. Jocelyn Renee Harris. Brandon Paul Hauk. Gavin Nicholas Hawk. Justice James Hay. Sierra Michelle Heisey Waltemeyer. Emma Renee Henches. Ethan Michael Herr. Ashton Elizabeth Hess. Haley Ann Hess. Sarah Ann Hinkle. Jarrett Lee Hoffer. Jonathan William Holden. Lydia Paige Homsher. Avery Elizabeth Hauser. Livia Bree Huber. Deegan Anthony Hughes. Riley Mitchell Hummer. <laughs> Autumn Ray Hunger. Muna Lisa Tiara Ibegbu. Preston Allen Yobst. Amber Ray James. Madison Paige Kaley. Sean Tyler Kaufman. Dalton Taylor Kennedy. Jordan Michaela Killian. Owen Daniel Kling. Emily Lucille Kreider. Kirsten Marie Kreiner. Micah Thomas Kurtz. Shannon Jean Lacey. Anna Olivia Laffey.
Heather Jane Lover. Megan Elizabeth Lover. Sabrina May Rose Lawrence. Madison Kylie Leedy. Ellie Sue Lapine. Sarah Jane Elizabeth Lazoin. Alexander James Lewis. Emily Kate Leinbarger. Michael Joseph Leinbarger. Logan Blaze Leibelsberger. James Nicholas Lynch. Alexis Celeste Mackley. Madison Sky Martinez. Caden Edward McCabe. Alyssa Nicole McCarty Smith. Paul Joseph Metzger. Anthony Jared Miller. Jordan Kyle Miller. Nicholas James Miller. Autumn Marie Moore. Destiny Anid Morales. Asia Renee Morrison. Noah Alexander Morrison. Hannah Rose Murphy. Sayeda Myra Njil Nakvi. Zachary Bradford Nisley. Everett Shaquille Nisley. Michael Shakur Nisley. Ashley Sue Nolt. Nolan Thomas O'Connell. Claire Rose O'Neill. Mason James Ober. Rachel Ann Oster. Brock Michael Overlander. Karen Sophia Padilla. Joanna Del Carmen Pagan Santos.
Chelsea May Painter. Madison Brooke Perdusky. Jordan Danielle Park. Emma Catherine Pisco. Tiana Marie Poole. Callie Arlene Quickle. Rena Anna Rankin. Madison Emily Rissinger. Joseph Edward Rhodes. Courtney Lynn Roan. Isabel Grace Richard. Carson Michael Riker. Owen Hugh Roberts. Brandon Michael Rossler. Cooper James Rollison. Catherine Elizabeth Rupp. Connor Michael Rudder. Chiara Marie Santiago. Isaac Santos. Joshua Schwartz. Ethan Eric Seidel. Jordan May Shank. Haley Brooke Schaub. Madison Ray Sheffer. Aurora Trinity Shelton. Levi Addison Seitz. Laura Miranda Smith. Carolyn Rebecca Snyder. Dakota Scott Snyder. Carly Anna Stankowicz. Rita Annette Stebbins. Ethan John Steck. Evan Alex Stamen. Emily Elizabeth Stowe. Milligan Schuyler Straub. Emily McKenna Stuck. Jackson Edward Sturges. Terrence Amir Swift.
James Robert Thomas. Madison Ann Trigg. Mara Kathleen Tyson. John Jeff T. Balsine. Ethan Jarrett Vardy. Chloe Vasquez. Matthew Christian Wakefield. Jennifer Elizabeth Gia Waldron. Hannah Noel Wallace. Angel Marie Elaine Walters. Bryce Cameron Juan. Trent Donovan Weaver. Katie Christine Weber. Owen Vaughn Weber. Aaron Douglas Wenzel. Julianne Russo Wheeler. Desiree Sue Whitcraft. Angel Lilia Williams. Regan Michelle Whitman. Alyssa Marie Yagley. Taj Christian Younger. Luke Andre Younginger. Lindsay Catherine Zell. Zoe Nicole Zimmerman. Jacob William Zook. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to once again introduce the senior class president, Myra Nakvi, for the response of the class of 2021. Graduates, could you please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the class, I proudly present to you the 2021 graduates of Donegal High School.
Would you please stand and join the class and the chorus in the singing of the Donegal High School alma mater? At the conclusion of the alma mater, I ask that graduates remain standing. You will recess as we practiced yesterday. Seniors, just make sure before you leave today, you pick up that important piece of paper, your diploma. It's not in that cover you picked up. There is also awards for some of you at the concession stand. For our guest today, we have a special treat. We have some Rita's Italian ice outside. Feel free when you're leaving uh, to pick some up. It's there while it lasts. Gentlemen, if you could please remove your caps. Ladies and gentlemen, the Donegal High School alma mater. Graduates, you are dismissed. Take your things with you.
Thank you. 